hello everyone. My name is Jared Sidner. Um, if you use Bake Smart, I'm sure you've talked to me. Uh, we've also got uh, Shelly here with us. Um, and we're just going to go through uh, some of the things that can help you get your Bake Smart uh, ready uh, for the holidays. Um, some settings we can use, some reports we can look at. Um, maybe if you're using our online, uh, you know, our e-commerce solution, uh, some settings there and some things we can do um, to just be prepared for the holidays. Uh, so if we can here, we should be able to see on my screen, my Big Smart. Whoops, if I did that right. There we go. Um, so first thing we're going to talk about real quick is going to be um, date and hours of operation exceptions um, that you can set in BakeSmart. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the times your store hours will change or the days that you're open will change. Um, and we wanna make sure, especially online customers know that and can't order for those times, as well as uh, you know, give staff a heads up um, if they're trying to place orders uh, for days that the store is closed. Um, so in BakeSmart uh, under settings, um, if we head into production, uh, we can set what we call date limits. Yeah, we got somebody coming in. Um, and you can see here that I've got a date limit set with a not great message. Um, we are closed. Okay, so we'll go ahead and set that message here. Um, and we can see that's for um, this Saturday. Um, so what that will do for us in Bake Smart um, is we're going to alert staff when they're creating an order, you know, and, and they're choosing a fulfillment time uh, of a date that we're closed, they're going to get this kind of notification, right? They're going to see that, um, you know, we're closed for the holidays on that day. Um, if they hit OK, then that's fine. They will have the ability to override that. Uh, we do give staff, you know, kind of the freedom uh, to make those choices uh, if we need to. Um, so as far as in-store, you know, that's what we're going to be able to do is let staff know, hey, um, we're closed for that day. Uh, online. Uh, we are going to go ahead and show um, your online users uh, the message that we've typed in um, and let them know that, you know, we won't let them place an order for that date when they're selecting that date. You can give them feedback that says, hey, we're closed on this date for the holidays or, or whatever you want the message to say. We won't allow an order to be taken for that date. Um, and uh, yeah, let's just change this one to that day. And let's change this to absolutely every, well, let's just make a new one. So we'll make a new one for the 14th. And this is, and get that uploaded to our server. So um, that was fast. Um, Another thing we can do uh, on the holidays, especially, is sometimes your hours change. Um, so you can come in and on the store level, you can say, hey, we've got a date exception. Um, on this date, you know, uh, we're either we've got some specialty hours uh, or maybe we're open on a day that we're typically closed. Um, these all upload online as well. Um, these are going to. You know, so I can say on the 14th, right, we're open from nine to noon. Um, if I have my settings in BakeSmart set to uh, automatically set my order times from store hours, which is set on our pickup level or fulfill, I'm sorry, on the on the fulfillment level here, pick up and delivery. If I have this auto set times for store hours set, then when I set those hour exceptions, we're going to limit fulfillment times in Bake Smart 
um, to those specific times. Then online, we've set on the 14th, right, that uh, I think I turned it all off, right? Settings, production. So we've turned off ordering for the 14th. So if I grab some of these products here and try to pick up on the 14th, we're going to see that that message is displayed to our users uh, and or our customers, and they're not able to go ahead and, and continue with their order. Um, so we can make sure that they are unable to, to place orders for those days. So in settings production, we can set some date limits on our store level. We can say, hey, yes, we're open on days we're typically closed. I mean, my classic example of that one is, is uh, you know, Christmas Eve. You're typically closed on a Sunday, but you want to allow Christmas Eve pickups. So on the store level, you can come in and set an exception and, and, and set an open exception, right? And say, whatever, it's not Christmas Eve, but you know, you can say, yes, we're open on that day. Um, and that's gonna allow online orders to be taken for that day as well as in-store orders. So that's working with those dates. Um, another thing um, that we can do uh, as far as on the product level, uh, we've got a few things that we can set um, that will help you know, with the holiday preparations as well. Uh, products can be set as seasonal items. Uh, so if we look at, sorry, um, maybe one of our seasonal items that we have here for Thanksgiving, uh, we can go ahead and come in here and set seasonal availability for this product. Once we have that set, so let's say November 1st, 1st to December 1st, right? Once we have that seasonal availability set for this product, um, it will only show up in the point of sale to be purchased on those days. Um, and if we need to, uh, it won't allow any ordering of that product uh, for the days that um, it is not available. Um, so if we come in and look at our holiday under Thanksgiving, we still have our turkey flavored cupcake because I didn't update my products. Holiday. Thanksgiving. So the product's not available uh, to be rung up. Um, if we're placing an order for it, we can go ahead and search for that item. And it will be available to place on an order, uh, but it won't show up until those dates um, are available, the first to the first. Um, so can I just add something really quick? Yes. Um, having operated a bakery myself in the past, this is a really key, um, this is an awesome function, especially with those special holiday products that just pop up around specific holidays. However, because the POS button does disappear based on those seasonal dates, it does involve just one level of training to your sales team to allow them, because many times if you don't do that well, they will they will get confused because they can't see it in there. So they'll have to use that search function um, and not just be able to click through whatever um, like Jared's showing now. So just a just a note um, of extra training for your sales team around those products that you set seasonal dates to. So um, additionally, when we set those seasonal uh, dates, uh, if that product is a catalog item, um, we will not allow uh, those items to be ordered uh, except for a fulfillment date uh, that falls within that seasonal date range. Um, so another thing we can do 
uh, on our products is set an alert on the product itself. Um, and, and we can also set, uh, uh, so let's come in here. We can set an alert on this product. That, so when it's added to a ticket, we can send a message to staff. Um, make sure to ask uh, why they like this. Right, who wants a turkey flavored cupcake, right? So we can set an alert on this product when staff adds this product to um, a sale uh, or an order, this alert's gonna pop up and, and you can communicate with staff uh, every time that this item is added um, to a ticket. Um, uh, the other thing we can do, if we set information uh, in the description uh, of this product, you know, I don't know, contains raw turkey, right? If we set some information in the description of this product here and in our settings, we've turned on point of sale. It is the, where did it go? I should have customizations. Yep. Yeah. To Screen, the right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And where could it, ah, show product information buttons. So if we've set a description on the product and we've set show product information buttons, um, I'm gonna go back to that turkey cupcake and turn its seasonal information off. Cupcake availability, clear, 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 clear. And let's update our products since we made some changes to those products. Okay, so now under holidays, we should have our turkey cupcake, right? This is going to be our alert that we've set. So if there's something you need staff to remember when they're taking this particular product, and maybe, you know, since it's not offered all the time, they don't really remember, we can set that product alert there. The other thing we can do since we've set that description and we've turned on show the product information button is staff can click or touch here in the lower level, lower left-hand corner of the button. Um, and they're going to get whatever you've put in the description field on the product. Um, so, you know, if it's something that contains nuts or people are always asking, you know, what's a Kringle, um, you can, you know, convey the information that you want staff to tell your customers right there um, in the point of sale. Um, another thing you may want to do. Um, is is maybe sort your your holiday items, uh, you know, your holiday category, maybe more towards the front. Or if we were looking at something like this, we may want to sort, you know, Thanksgiving um, to the front here um, since it's coming, you know, before Easter. Um, and so we can come in and just as a as a refresher in, in Bake Smart, we can sort uh, most everything, um, but um, you know, you can come in and change the sort order of your categories under product categories, right? And so if I'm looking at my holiday category here and I want to sort Thanksgiving to the front, I'm just going to give that a one. I'll leave everything else blank. So everything else will go in alphabetical order, but I can go ahead and sort those, you know, that particular uh, holiday subcategory to the front. Um, and then that way it's easier for my staff to find. So once I've made that change and updated, if I come into holiday, if I update my settings, we can see that my Thanksgiving, um, you know, subcategory has sorted to the front there. Another thing we can do um, is set favorites, right? And we can put those holiday items here in our favorites. Our favorite selection is what's gonna, it's the products that populate the screen as soon as, as a new sale button 
is clicked, right? Those are going to be the things that uh, we sell a lot of. Um, and you can do that with those seasonal items too, as they become more popular. Um, so, you know, maybe my, my turkey flavored cupcake takes off, right? It goes viral. And I want to make sure that staff is able to find it easily. Um, we can go ahead and come in on the product level under availability um, and go ahead and, and favorite that item. Once that item's been favorited, um, you know, if we update our products, we're going to see it here in our favorites. This product will also remain in its regular category and subcategory. So I can come into holiday and I can find my turkey flavored cupcake there as well. Um, so, you know, we can bring those, those seasonal items uh, or holiday, you know, items here uh, to the front um, by making them um, a favorite, but they'll also stay in their same familiar place uh, if staff's used to going into that spot and finding them. You can go ahead and bring those to the front. Um, I think uh, additionally, you know, now might be a good time to consider updating your pricing. Uh, updating pricing in BakeSmart is extremely easy. Um, you can do it on a product by product basis, or you can do it um, category by category or, or however we want to do it. Um, so if I come in and, and maybe, you know, I'm just going to update the price of my apple pie here to $17.99, I can set that here. I can update my pricing for my, you know, wholesale. Um, and that product price is updated. The other thing I can do is I can come into Bakesmart and my list of products and I can just grab entire categories of products. Um, I can grab all my products if I want. I actually did this for a customer a couple days ago, just having an issue and he wanted to update, you know, every product price. So we just showed all of our products. We came, we clicked the edit all button, came into pricing. And, you know, at this point I grabbed his retail price level and said, you know, increase all the pricing by 10, 10 percent, round it to the nearest five cents, and you know, apply that. Right, and that might take a minute um, to calculate all those new prices. Maybe I should have picked a smaller subset, but this is going to be a quick and simple way to update our entire catalog pricing by whatever amount. And so I've got my new prices. I can review those. These prices have not changed until I either save it, and you'll see the 1980 pop over here, and our new price will be empty. I should have picked a smaller subset, um, right? Uh, or I can go ahead and say, yep, all these prices look good. Save all. It's going to update all the pricing of every product that we've listed here, which is all my products. I'm going to go ahead and get out of that. Um, I do think if if you're using Big Smart Online, um, you will want to, after you've updated those product prices, you'll want to come into your catalog uh, and review the price, uh, which should update with the underlying price of the of the product that we've used to create the catalog item, um, and then re-upload those catalog items to make sure that you're getting, I'm sorry, to make sure that you're getting um, the new prices um, Right, so here's my new 1980 price, uh, but we wanna make sure that that's available or that that's updated online as well. So once you've updated prices, you'll wanna go into your catalog and re-upload your catalog items so that those, um, those products get their prices updated online as well. Um, well speaking of online, um, another thing we would suggest that you do is go ahead and, and update your banners uh, here to um, reflect your, your seasonal offerings. Uh, you can have up to three of these banners 
Um, the banners are set in the admin section. Honestly, I don't know the password to this one. Uh, but if you go to your Bake Smart online, go to admin. Let's see if that's it. Hey, look at that. Um, and come into manage sliders. Um, you can see I have, I have four. I didn't, but we can come in here um, and remove sliders, add new ones, um, and change those banners around. You can also come in and, and change its status by editing it. And I can say the status on this one is inactive. And so that picture will still be there when I want to come back to it. Uh, maybe once the holidays are over, I can go ahead and set this one as active. Um, but uh, you'll need to do that in the admin panel. If you are a Big Smart Online customer and you don't have access to your admin panel, let me know. I will set up a username and password for you. Um, the size of those sliders uh, is going to be... Uh, oh, I didn't know there was any chats going on. Uh, let's see, that last, uh, where'd we do it? Uh, what, uh, you know, so the size of the, the sliders, the banner images that works best is uh, 1140 by 300. So that's 1140 pixels by 300 pixels. Um, that's going to work the best. Um, and then... So uh, let's see, that's updating our banners. Um, the next thing uh, I guess to talk about then would be setting up your seasonal and your holiday uh, catalog items, um, which we can do again from, whoops, lists, catalog. Uh, we can create additional holiday uh, categories and subcategories, um, as well as adding those particular holiday products up online. Um, you know, obviously online, it's really important to have a nice picture. Um, so you're gonna wanna make sure uh, you're, you know, getting a nice photo of that product um, and getting all those those catalog items into uh, those holiday um, categories if that's where you want to if that's where you want to uh, organize those. Um, and then finally, um, the uh, the last thing I guess I have prepared to talk about would be reporting, right? So we're gonna want to, you know, to be prepared, you can go back and look through your historical data in Big Smart uh, and run those reports um, and look at items that you had sold uh, last year, maybe the year before, so you can kind of predict what kind of volume um, that you may, you know, have uh, for for this season. Um, and so, a, a report like that's going to be an item report, um, and you would go, you know, head into create your report, you're going to look at an item report. Um, again, uh, if you want to know, um, you know, items on when they left the store, that's going to always be our date required. So that's for, for walk-in sales and orders. If I'm looking at my date required, um, I don't have any data from a year ago. I do have some from last week, though. We can pretend. Um, you can narrow this down by a category or subcategory if you want. Um, so if you've got the seasonal products in from, from last, you know, the holiday products in still from, from last year, the year before, um, you know, you can grab just those products or the category that they may be in. And then additionally, you know, you're going to want to see um, what product we've got. I'm going to, we'll leave it at this. And this is going to give me a good idea of, we're going to pretend this is last year, uh, but this is my last last week, right? And these are the items I sold. Um, and so you can run that report over the past, you know, couple years and see um, the volume that you've done with particular products. Um, 
to kind of help you determine what kind of, you know, what volume may, you may have um, this holiday season. Um, so uh, that's, that's all I had prepared to talk about. I do see that Ray had a question here. Um, can we set up multiple seasonal dates? I don't have, I have products that I only sell at three holidays. Uh, Ray, no, um, I can only have the one seasonal date uh, at a time. Um, if you could let me know some more information about that um, and what those, you know, what those products are, um, we could talk about finding a way to make that work for you. Uh, but but right now, um, a product can only have uh, one set of seasonal dates, one start and end seasonal date. Uh, so uh, does anyone else have any questions about what we've covered or any other thing they may like to see? another message let's see uh, from ray yeah three three different names for the product might you know be the workaround for that one at this this time um but yeah i we can certainly discuss it and see what we can figure out for you but yeah three different products would would, would be a workaround for sure um Any anyone else? Um, all right, Shelly, anything to add? Anything I missed? No, I think you covered everything pretty well. Um, obviously, if there's any follow-up questions to this, feel free to reach out to us directly. We'd love to just be here as you guys are ramping up for the busy season. We know you're about to get get crazy so we just want to support any way we can okay we did have one last kim would like to go over limits on a product um so we do have production limits um we do not in bake smart um you can set a production limit and you can set that for your custom items which is saying hey you know, I can take I can take this amount of orders for custom items on this particular day, and I can take this amount of orders for non-custom items on a particular day. Um, we don't have a way to set a limit and say you can only um, I guess we do, but these are yeah, these are by category and and they don't work online. Um, but you can definitely set limits. Yeah, custom and non-custom or even by, uh, whoops, by a category, but not a particular product. Um, online, you can, again, you could cut off a particular product individually, um, but we don't have anything that says, you know, once I get to, I don't know, you know, 700 uh, pumpkin pies, you know, for the day before Thanksgiving, I can't take any more. Um, we don't have any way to, to to limit it that way. You would have to kind of um, run a re run reports and keep your eyes on on the volume uh, to be able to then kind of manually cut those off. Um, is that what I hope that's what you were asking there? Okay. Um, got a real late entry to the party. I think they're going to be. I'll let them in, but. Um, okay. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Jared, I have a question. Ah. Um, 
So online, um, we now have the capability of like making exceptions to ordering times, um, yes. blocking part of the date. Is, can we do that? Is that functionality um, on the POS side as well? Because we're kind of running into the same problem is online is having our sales associates, mm -hmm. you know, not order when they're not supposed to, you know, sure. putting those orders in. Right. You know, I poked around, but I wasn't seeing that. So I was wondering if that can be done or not. Yeah, right. So um, the, the only thing that will affect um, Bake Smart where staff is placing the order is if we're setting exception times, which is going to be on the store level, right, where we're going into these exceptions here and setting special hours. Um, if we set special hours on 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 here and you have Bake Smart set uh, for your orders to um, auto set times from store hours, it will limit the times available uh, for them to choose for, for pickup for that day. Uh, otherwise- Okay, so I have to, I have to check that auto set. Will that then affect, yep. go back and affect stuff online as well? Yep, yep. So that will affect online. This, if we set auto set times from store hours in whatever increments, right? instead of using um, these times, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to use the store's time by whatever increment you set there, hour, half hour. Um, and that's uh, stores. But I can't, when I do that, I can't pick and choose days because so, you know, for Christmas and New Year's, the Eve is on Sundays. We're typically not open Sundays except those two days of this year. Yep. Right. Um, so, you know, you can set an, an uh, open exception with hours, you know. Okay. Um, and and pick the exception date. Okay. Yeah. All right. If I run yeah. into any hiccups, I'll call. Yeah, right. So, uh, but that's the only thing we really prevent in-store staff from doing, unfortunately. Okay. All is right. Those, those hours. That's all I got. Thanks. Okay. It. Sure thing. All right. Anybody else have anything? All right. Well, uh, thanks everyone for attending. The recording of this, we will put up on our Facebook page. Um, you will probably see that, yeah, by tomorrow. Oh, and it'll be on our YouTube page as well. Um, so if you want to hear me stumble through all this stuff again, it'll be there for you to, to listen to. Uh, but thanks for taking the time to join us, everyone. And um, you will see you out there. Hey, thanks, guys. Thank you, Jared. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye. -bye.